Hello everybody and welcome to lesson 10, non-probability sampling. In previous lesson 9, we already discussed probability sampling. In non-probability sampling, as the name implies, the selection of a sample element is not necessarily made with the aim of being statistically representative of the target population. Because in the non-probability sampling, there is no equal chance of being selected each element does not have equal chance to be selected because the researcher uses the researcher uses subjective judgment such as personal experience conveniency expert judgment to select each element in the sampling as a result the probability of any element of the population being chosen is not known or is not equal there is no statistical methods, by the way. There is no statistical method for measuring the sampling error. In non-probability sampling, we cannot measure the sampling error unlike that of the probability sampling. And the other is it is not possible to generalize the finding, uh, the finding to the target population with a specified degree of confidence because, because the sample taken in non-probability sampling is based on the subjective judgment rather than just randomization principle. That's why we cannot generalize, we cannot generalize on the target population based on the finding of the samples. Coming to the non-probability sampling merits, there are importances for non-probability sampling. The first one is its simplicity and ease of implementation. Actually, in the case of probability sampling, it is somewhat difficult to conduct probability sampling because it requires large amount of sample for representativeness. So it, re it is very challenging to conduct probability sampling. Whereas in the case of probability sa non probability sampling, it is simplicity and ease of implementation is one advantage. And the other is accessibility to specific groups or individual is another uh, benefit. And, it can be non probability sampling can be applied when probability sampling is not feasible or uh, practical for example in the case of qualitative research we cannot apply probability sampling so we have to apply non probability uh, sampling in uh, conducting qualitative research types even we can uh, use prob non probability sampling when the type of uh, research is exploratory research type actually you can refer back uh, uh, you can revert back to the previous lessons if you want to know about the type of uh, researches moving to uh, the merits the demerits of non probability sampling uh, the limited generalizability is uh, one of the disadvantages and the other is sampling bears because there is no randomization principles because there is subjective judgment of the researcher we cannot uh, generalize based on the finding from the sample or there is a sampling bias. there is inclusion more of inclusion on uh, some groups and less of uh, inclusion or exclusion there is inclusion or exclusion error so there is sampling bias in the case of non probability sampling thus it is difficult to have statistical inference and the finding of the non probability sampling is less reliable unlike that of the probability sampling types of non probability sampling non probability sampling methods can be divided into four that is convenient sampling purposive sampling snowball and quota sampling let's discuss one by one let's start from convenient sampling as the name implies participants are selected based on the conveniency or based on their availability and accessibility for the researchers for example serving people in shopping mall or students in the classroom is easily accessible for the researcher let's take this example the population around here are nearby for the researcher if uh, we assume that this is a researcher so taking a samples from the nearby uh, population is convenient sampling so there are merits and demerits for convenient sampling to stand from the merits convenient and easy to implement and it requires minimal resource because because uh, the samples are easily accessible and reachable for the researchers and it is suitable particularly for exploratory research or when access to the population is limited and on the contrary there are demerits 
it is prone to selection bias actually this is uh, general nature of non probability sampling since the readily available or accessible uh, sample may not represent the entire population and the other is results may lack generalizability actually these are the demerits of the uh, convenience sampling in general the second type is purposive sampling it involves selecting participants based on specific criteria or characteristic which is relevant to the research objective researchers intentionally choose individuals who possess certain qualities or expertise that are essential to the study so here as you see from uh, this uh, example from this figure so the researcher intentionally selects based on certain quality let's take uh, one example if we want to know about the experience of covid so we have to select we have to purposefully select the uh, peoples or the individuals who recovered from covid otherwise no one can tell the experience of covid rather than just those who experience or who recover from uh, covid so we purposefully select those individuals let's come to the merits and demerits of uh, purposive sampling and coming to the merits it allows researchers to target specific individuals or groups who possess desired characteristics or expertise which is useful for achieving the research objective and it is useful for studying rare or unique cases which are not found very commonly and demerit is potential for researcher bias in selecting participants or limited generalizability actually this is a common uh, demerit of the non probability sampling Moving to the snowball sampling, snowball sampling relies on referrals, by the way, referral, referrals, that is uh, network sampling, we can say, by the way, it's a network sampling from initial participants to identify and recruit additional participants. As you see from this uh, picture, so the researcher is this one, so the researcher have contact with two pupils, so those two pupils so still two pupils in uh, in turn have a contact of two pupils and they recruit uh, the samples so using this network the, using this network we can recruit ad additional participants as a, a sample or sample so uh, let's see the merits and the demerits the merits is effective for locating and sampling hard to reach population or individuals because here we we can use a network or we can use our referrals so, so we can reach the individuals who are uh, not accessible for uh, us so participants refer other potential participants creating a chain of referrals or networks moving to the demerits non-random selection may lead to bias over representation of certain characteristics within, uh, a sam within the sample and difficult to estimate the sampling error. Actually, because these pupils are found in a group or in a network, so there may be over representation of some features or some characteristics of these samples because they are found in a group or in a network. Moving to the fourth type of sampling, that's quota sampling. In quota sampling, it involves it involves setting predetermined quotas or proportions for different subgroups within a population. So here we have to select participants to fulfill these quotas based on a specific uh, criteria such as age, gender, occupation, geographical location. Uh, let's take this example. Uh, if we provide a quota for the adults, adults, male adults, female adults, and children. Once we provide a quota for uh, these divisions, so we just uh, take data, uh, data just uh, based on our conveniency, we just take data from these uh, groups. Actually, this type of uh, sampling is, uh, it seems parallel to that of the probability sampling that is stratified sampling but in stratified sampling we use randomization principle but in this case uh, we are not using randomization or uh, random uh, sampling techniques so to talk about merits it ensures the sample represents specific groups by allowing strata by key variables 
it allows a representation of uh, the groups but this doesn't mean the representation is uh, based on the random sample uh, when you come to the demerits non-random selection may introduce bias it's common for all non probability sampling and the other is the sampling frame is not always clear and estimating sampling error can be uh, very challenging in the case of quota sampling so this is all about uh, today's discussion thank you for listening and wish you all the best